Hey everybody, what up? This is chapter 8, the digestive system. We are looking on page 140 in your book. The structures, word parts, and functions of the digestive system. Major structures we have are the mouth, with the word root or, oro, and that's what begins preparation of food for digestion. We got the pharynx, which is pharynge, pharyngeo, in the word root, and that is in our throat, and it transports food from the mouth to the esophagus. We've got the esophagus, with the word root esophage, esophageo, and that transports food from the pharynx to the stomach. Next we have stomach, the word root is gastra, gastro, and that breaks down food and mixes it with digestive juices, then goes on to the small intestines with the word root enter, entero, that completes digestion and absorption of most nutrients. Following there, we go on to the large intestine with the word root col, colo, which absorbs excess water and prepares solid waste for elimination. Elimination is handled by the rectum and anus with the word roots ane, ano, proct, procto, and rect, recto, which is the control for the excretion of solid waste. Other players in this digestive game are the liver, with the word root hepat hepato, which secretes bile and enzymes to aid in the digestion of fat. We have the gall uh, gallbladder, which is a word root cholecyst, cholecisto, that stores bile and releases it into the small intestine as needed. And finally, the pancreas, with the word root, word root pancreat pancreato, which secretes digestive juices and enzymes into the small intestine as needed. The digestive system is also known as the alimentary canal. Aliment means to nourish, and airy means pertaining to. This system is responsible for the intake and digestion of food, the absorption of nutrients from digestive food, and the elimination of solid waste products. The major structures of the digestive system include the oral cavity, the mouth, the pharynx, also known as the throat, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Accessory organs related to the digestive system include the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So let's get started by talking about the gastrointestinal tract first. The structures of the digestive system are also described as the gastrointestinal or GI tract. Gastra, gastro means stomach, intestine means intestine, and al means pertaining to. The upper GI consists of the mouth, esophagus, and stomach, while the lower GI tract is made up of the small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. The intestines are sometimes referred to as the bowels. When these terms are used to describe diagnostic procedures, the small intestine is usually included with the upper GI tract. The major structures of the oral cavity, also known as the mouth, are the lips, hard and soft palates, salivary glands, tongue, teeth, and the periodontum. The lips, also known as labia, form the opening of the oral cavity. The labia are also part of the female genitalia. Another word part relating to the lips of the mouth is chili, chilio. The palate, which forms the roof of the mouth, consists of two parts, the hard and soft palates. The hard palate forms the bony anterior portion of the palate that is covered with specialized mucous membrane. Rugae, which are irregular ridges or folds in the mucous membrane, cover the anterior portion of the hard palate. Rugae are also found in the stomach. The soft palate forms the flexible portion of the posterior of the palate. It, is the, it has the important role of closing off the nasal passage during swallowing so food does not move upward into the nasal cavity. The uvula, which hangs from the free edge of the soft palate, helps in producing sounds and speech. The tongue, which is very strong and flexible, aids in speech and moves food during chewing and swallowing. The upper surface of the tongue has a tuft protective covering and contains the papillae, which are also known as the taste buds. The underside of the tongue is highly vascular and covered with delicate tissue. Highly vascular means that it contains a lot of blood vessels. It is this structure that makes it possible for medications placed under the tongue to be quickly absorbed into the bloodstream. The term dentation refers to the natural teeth arranged in the maxillary and mandibular arches. Indentulous means without teeth. This term is used after the natural teeth have been lost. Human dentation includes four types of teeth, incisors and canines, also known as cuspids, that are used for biting and tearing, plus premolars, also known as bicuspids, and molars that are used for chewing and grinding. The primary dentation, also known as deciduous dentation, or baby teeth, consists of 20 teeth, 
8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 molars, and no premolars. The primary teeth are lost normally and replaced by permanent teeth. The permanent dentation consists of 32 teeth, with 8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 premolars, and 12 molars. These teeth are designed to last a lifetime. As used in dentistry, occlusion is any contact between the chewing surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular teeth, the upper and lower jaws. Malocclusion is any deviation from a normal occlusion. The crown of the tooth is the portion that is visible in the mouth. It is covered with enamel, the strongest tissue in the body. The root of the tooth holds the tooth securely in place within the dental arch. The root is protected by cementum. The crown and root meet at the neck of the tooth. Dentin makes up the bulk of a tooth and is protected by enamel and cementum. The pulp chamber is the inner area of the crown of the tooth that runs downward to form the root canals. The pulp is made of a very rich supply of blood vessels and nerves. The periodontum consists of the bone and soft tissues that surround and support the teeth. The gingiva, also known as the gums, are the specialized mucous membrane that surround the teeth, cover the bone of the dental arches, and continues to form the lining of the cheeks. The salivary glands secrete saliva that moisten food, begin the digestive process, and clean the mouth. There are three pairs of salivary glands. Parotid glands, which are located on the face, in the front, and slightly lower than each ear. Sublingual glands, which are located on the underside of the tongue. And submandibular glands, located on the floor of the mouth. The pharynx, also known as the throat, is the common passageway for both respiration and digestion. During swallowing, food is prevented from moving from the pharynx into the lungs by the epiglottis, which closes off the entrance to the trachea. This closing allows food to move safely into the esophagus. The esophagus, also known as the gullet, is a collapsible tube that leads from the pharynx to the stomach. The lower esophageal sphincter, also known as the cardiac sphincter, is a ring-like muscle that controls the flow between the esophagus and the stomach. When this functions normally, stomach contents do not flow back into the esophagus. The stomach is a sac-like organ composed of the fundus, which is the upper rounded part, the body, which is the main portion, and the antrum, which is the lower part. Rugae, which are folds in the mucosa lining the stomach. Glands located within these folds produce the gastric juices that aid in digestion and mucus that forms the protective coating of the lining of the stomach. The pylorus is the narrow passage connecting the stomach with the small intestine, and the pyloric sphincter is the muscle ring that controls the flow from the stomach to the duodenum of the small intestine. The small intestine extends from the pyloric sphincter to the first part of the large intestine. It is here that the nutrients from food are absorbed into the bloodstream. The small intestine is a coiled organ up to 20 feet in length. However, it is known as the small intestine because it is smaller in diameter than the large intestine. The small intestine consists of three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The duodenum is the first portion of the small intestine, and it extends from the pylorus to the jejunum, also pronounced duodenum. The jejunum is the middle portion of the small intestine, and it extends from the duodenum to the ileum. And finally, the ileum is the last portion of the small intestine, and extends from the jejunum to the cecum of the large intestine. The ileocecal sphincter controls the flow from the ileum of the small intestine into the cecum of the large intestine. The large intestine extends from the end of the small intestine to the anus. The waste products of digestion are processed in the large intestine and then excreted through the anus. The major parts of the large intestine are the cecum, colon, rectum, and anus. The cecum is a pouch that lies on the right side of the abdomen. It extends from the end of the ileum to the beginning of the colon. The veriform appendix, commonly called the appendix, hangs from the lower portion of the cecum. The name veriform refers to its worm-like shape. The appendix, which consists of lymphatic tissue, serves no known function in the digestive system. The colon is subdivided into four parts. The ascending colon, which travels upward from the cecum to the undersurface of the liver. The transverse colon passes horizontally from right to left towards the spleen. The descending colon travels down the left side of the abdominal cavity to the sigmoid colon. 
The sigmoid colon is an S-shaped structure that continues from the descending colon above and joins with the rectum below. The rectum, which is the last division of the large intestine, ends at the anus. The anus is the lower opening of the digestive tract. The flow of waste through the anus is controlled by two anal sphincter muscles. The term anorectal refers to the anus and rectum as a single unit, and ano meaning anus, rect meaning rectum, and al meaning pertaining to. The following organs are referred to as accessory organs because they play a key role in the digestive process but are not part of the gastrointestinal tract. The liver is located in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen and has several important functions. The term hepatic means pertaining to the liver. Hepat hepato means liver and ick means pertaining to. The liver removes excess glucose, also known as blood sugar, from the bloodstream and stores it as glycogen, which is a form of starch. When the blood sugar level is low, the liver converts glycogen back into glucose and releases it for use in the body. The liver destroys old erythrocytes, red blood cells, remove poisons from the blood, and manufactures some blood proteins. Bilirubin, a pigment produced from the destruction of hemoglobin, is released by the liver in bile. Excess bilirubin in the blood is associated with jaundice. The liver secretes bile, which is a digestive juice containing enzymes that break down fat. The term biliary as in the biliary system, means pertaining to bile. Bile travels down the common hepatic duct to the cystic duct that leads to the gallbladder where bile is stored. The gallbladder is a pear-shaped sac located under the liver. It stores and concentrates the bile for later use. The term cholecystic means pertaining to the gallbladder. Cholecyst means gallbladder and ick means pertaining to. When bile is needed, the gallbladder contracts, forcing the bile out through the cystic duct and into the common bile duct that carries it into the duodenum or duodenum of the small intestine. The pancreas is the feather-shaped organ located posterior to, just behind the stomach. It has important roles in both the digestive and endocrine systems. The endocrine functions plus the pathology and procedures related to the pancreas are discussed further in Chapter 13. The pancreas synthesizes and secretes pancreatic juices. These juices are made up of sodium bicarbonate to help neutralize stomach acids and digestive enzymes to process protein, carbohydrates, and fats from food. The pancreatic juices leave the pancreas through pancreatic ducts that join the common bile duct just before entrance into the duodenum. Digestion is the process by which complex foods are broken down into the nutrients in a form that the body can use. Enzymes, for example, are responsible for chemical changes that break down foods into simpler forms of nutrients for use by the body. A nutrient is a substance, usually from food, that is necessary for normal functioning of the body. So when we talk about digestion, we're going to be considering the metabolism, how those nutrients actually absorb into your system, the role of the mouth's salivary glands and esophagus, the role of the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. So let's begin. Metabolism is the sum of anabolism and catabolism. That is, this term includes all of the processes involved in the body's use of these nutrients. Metabol meaning change and ism meaning condition. Anabolism is the building up of body cells and substances from nutrients, whereas catabolism is the opposite of anabolism. It's the breaking down of body cells or substances releasing energy and carbon dioxide. Absorption is the process by which completely digested nutrients are taken into the circulatory system by passing through the capillaries located in the walls of the small intestine. Fats and fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed into the lymphatic system through villi, the tiny hair-like projections that line the walls of the small intestine. Mastication, also known as chewing, breaks down food into smaller pieces and mixes it with saliva. Saliva contains an enzyme that begins the chemical breakdown to convert starches into sugar. During swallowing, food travels from the mouth into the pharynx and on into the so esophagus. In the esophagus, food moves downward through the action of gravity and peristalsis. Peristalsis is a series of wave-like contractions of the smooth muscles in a single direction. The gastric juices of the stomach contain hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. 
Few nutrients enter the bloodstream through the walls of the stomach. Instead, the churning action of the stomach works with the gastric juices to convert the food to chyme. Chyme is the semi-fluid mass of partially digested food that passes from the stomach through the pyloric sphincter and into the small intestine. Food is moved through the intestines by peristaltic action, and digestion is completed in the duodenum after the chyme has been mixed with bile and pancreatic juice. Bile breaks apart large fat globules into smaller particles so enzymes in the pancreatic juices can digest the fats. This action is called emulsification and must be completed before the nutrients can be absorbed into the body. The role of the entire large intestine is to receive the solid waste products of digestion and store them until they are eliminated from the body. Excess water is absorbed from the food waste through the walls of the large intestine and solid feces are formed. Feces, also known as stools, are solid body waste expelled through the rectum and anus. Defecation, also known as a bowel movement, is the evacuation or emptying of the large intestines. Gas is frequently produced by the normal, friendly bacteria in the colon, which helps to further break down the food. The gas that is passed out of the body through the rectum is known as flatulence or flatus. Borborygmus is the rumbling noise caused by the movement of gas in the intestine. Hey, did any of that sound interesting? Well, I hope so. If so, maybe these medical specialties are going to be interesting to you. A dentist holds a Doctor of Dental Surgery or Doctor of Medical Dentistry degree and specializes in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders of teeth and tissues of the oral cavity. A gastroenterologist specializes in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders of the stomach and intestines. Gastro gastro means stomach, enter means small intestine, and ologist means specialist. An internist specializes in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders of the internal organs. An orthodontist is a dental specialist in the prevention or correction of abnormalities in the positioning of the teeth and related facial structures. A periodontist is a dental specialist who prevents or treats disorders of the tissues surrounding the teeth, and a proctologist specializes in disorders of the colon, rectum, and anus. Proct, procto means anus and rectum, and ologist means specialist. Now that we've seen how a digestive system works correctly, let's look at the pathology of the digestive system for diseases and disorders. Going through the pathology, we'll start with the tissues of the oral cavity and move on to dental diseases, followed by diseases and disorders of the esophagus, stomach, followed by eating disorders, digestion and vomiting, intestinal disorders, anorectal disorders, and issues with the liver and gallbladder. Aphthous ulcers, also known as canker sores, are recurrent blister-like sores that break and form lesions on the soft tissues lining the mouth. Although the exact cause is unknown, the appearance of these sores is associated with stress, certain foods, or a fever. Herpes labialis, also known as cold sores or fever blisters, are blister-like sores caused by the herpes simplex virus that occur on the lips and adjacent tissue. A cleft lip, also known as a hair lip, is a congenital defect resulting in a deep fissure of the lip running upward to the nose. As used here, a fissure is a deep groove or opening. A cleft palate is a congenital fissure of the palate that involves the upper lift, hard palate, and or soft palate. If not corrected, this opening between the nose and mouth makes it difficult for the child to eat and speak. Bruxism is involuntary grinding or clenching of the teeth that usually occurs during sleep and is associated with tension or stress. Bruxism wears away tooth structure, damages periodontal tissues, and injures the temporomandibular joint. Dental calculus is hardened dental plaque on the teeth that irritates the surrounding tissues. The term calculus also describes hard deposits, commonly known as stones, formed in any part of the body. Dental caries, also known as tooth decay or a cavity, is an infectious disease that destroys the enamel and dentin of the tooth. If the decay process is not arrested, the pulp can be exposed and become infected. Dental plaque is a soft deposit consisting of bacteria and bacterial byproducts that builds up on the teeth and is the major cause of dental caries and periodontal disease. Plaque also means a patch or small differentiated area on the body surface or the buildup of deposits of cholesterol in blood vessels. 
Periodontal disease, also known as periodontitis, is an inflammation of the tissues that surround and support the teeth. Peri meaning surrounding, odont meaning tooth or teeth, and itis meaning inflammation. This progressive disease is classified according to a degree of tissue involvement. Gingivitis, an inflammation of the gums, is the earliest stage of periodontal disease. Gingiv means gums and itis means inflammation. Halitosis, also known as bad breath, may be caused by dental diseases or respiratory or gastric disorders. Halit means breath and osis means condition of. Temporomandibular disorders, TMD abbreviated, also known as myofacial pain dysfunction, MPD, are a group of complex symptoms including pain, headache, or difficulty in chewing that are related to the functioning of the temporomandibular joint. Dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing, dys meaning difficult and phasia meaning swallowing. Esophageal reflux, also known as gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, is the upward flow of stomach acid into the esophagus. Reflux means a backward or return flow. Esophageal varices are enlarged and swollen veins at the lower end of the esophagus. Severe bleeding occurs if one of these veins ruptures. Ihaeal hernia is a protrusion of part of the stomach through the esophageal sphincter in the diaphragm. Hiate means opening and al means pertaining to. This condition may cause esophageal reflux and pyrosis. Pyrosis, also known as heartburn, is the burning sensation caused by the return of acidic stomach contents into the esophagus. Pyre means fever or fire and osis means abnormal condition. Gastritis is an inflammation of the stomach. Gastro gastro means stomach and itis means inflammation. Gastroenteritis is an inflammation of the stomach and intestines, especially the small intestine. Gastro gastro means stomach, enter means small intestine, and itis means inflammation. Gastrorasia is bleeding from the stomach. Gastro means stomach and rasia means bleeding. Gastrorrhea is an excessive flow of gastric secretions, gastro meaning stomach and rhea meaning abnormal flow. And gastrorexis is a rupture of the stomach, gastro meaning stomach and rexis meaning rupture. A peptic ulcer is a lesion of the mucous membranes of the digestive system. Pept means digestion and ic means pertaining to. These ulcers, which are frequently caused by the bacterium Heliocobacter pylori, may occur in the lower end of the esophagus, the stomach, or in the duodenum. Gastric ulcers are peptic ulcers that occur in the stomach. Duodenal ulcers are peptic ulcers that occur in the upper part of the small intestine and are the most common form of peptic ulcer. A perforating ulcer involves erosion through the entire thickness of the organ wall. Anorexia is the lack or loss of appetite for food. Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder characterized by a refusal to maintain a minimally normal body weight and an intense fear of gaining weight. Compulsive dieting and excessive exercising often cause the patient to become emaciated. Emaciated means abnormally thin. Bulimia, also known as bulimia nervosa, is an eating disorder characterized by episodes of binge eating followed by inappropriate compensatory behavior such as self-induced vomiting or misuse of laxatives, diuretics, or other medications. Dehydration is a condition in which fluid loss exceeds fluid intake and disrupts the body's normal electrolyte balance. Malnutrition is a lack of proper food or nutrients in the body, either due to a shortage of food or the improper absorption or distribution of nutrients. Obesity is an excessive accumulation of fat in the body. The term obese is usually used to refer to individuals who are 20 to 30 percent over the established standards for height, age, sex, and weight. Pika is an eating disorder in which there is a persistent eating of non-nutritional substances, such as clay. These abnormal cravings are sometimes associated with pregnancy. Achlorhydria is the absence of hydrochloric acid from gastric secretions. Aerophagia is the spasmodic swallowing of air followed by eructations. Eructation is the act of belching or raising gas orally from the stomach. Dyspepsia, also known as indigestion, is an impairment of digestion. Emesis, also known as vomiting, 
means to expel the contents of the stomach through the esophagus and out the mouth. Hematemesis, or hematemesis, is vomiting blood. Hyperemesis means excessive vomiting. Nausea is the sensation that leads to the urge to vomit. Regurgitation is the return of swallowed food into the mouth. Colorectal cancer is a common form of cancer that often first manifests itself in polyps in the colon. Diverticulitis is inflammation of one or more diverticulum. A diverticulum is a pouch or sac occurring in the lining or wall of a tubular organ, including the intestines. Chronic inflammatory bowel disease of the gastrointestinal tract are known as inflammatory bowel diseases, abbreviated IBDS. Colitis is an inflammation of the colon. Crohn's disease is a chronic autoimmune disorder involving any part of the gastrointestinal tract, but most commonly resulting in scarring and thickening of the walls of the ileum, colon, or both. Enteritis is an inflammation of the small intestines. Ileitis is an inflammation of the ileum. Spastic colon, also known as irritable bowel syndrome, abbreviated IBS, is a disorder of the motility, the ability to move spontaneously, of the entire GI tract. It is characterized by abdominal pain, nausea, gas, constipation, and or diarrhea. Now let's discuss intestinal obstructions. Ileus is a temporary stoppage of intestinal peristalsis that may be accompanied by severe pain, abdominal distension, vomiting, absence of passage of stools, fever, and dehydration. Ileus may be present for 24 to 72 hours after abdominal surgery. Intestinal adhesions abnormally hold together parts of the intestine where they normally should be separate. This condition, which is caused by inflammation or trauma, can lead to intestinal obstruction. Intestinal obstruction is a complete stoppage or serious impairment to the passage of the intestinal contents. A mechanical obstruction may result from a blockage that can be due to many causes, including the presence of a tumor. In a strangulating obstruction, the blood flow to a segment of the intestine is cut off. This may lead to gangrene and perforation. Volvulus is twisting of the intestine on itself that causes an obstruction. Interception is the telescoping of one part of the intestine into the opening of an immediately adjacent part. This is typically a condition found in infants and young children. An inguinal hernia is the protrusion of a small loop of the bowel through a weak place in the lower abdominal wall or groin. Infectious diseases of the intestines may be transmitted through contaminated food and water or through poor sanitary practices. Bowel incontinence is the inability to control the excretion of feces. Urinary incontinence refers to the inability to control urination, and we'll discuss that later in Chapter 9. Constipation is a decrease in frequency in the passage of stools or difficulty in passing hard, dry stools. Diarrhea is an abnormal frequency of loose or watery stools that may lead to dehydration. Hemorrhoids, also known as piles, are enlarged veins in or near the anus that may cause pain and bleeding. Melina is the passage of black stools containing digested blood. Cirrhosis is a progressive degenerative disease of the liver characterized by the disturbance of the structure and function of the liver. It frequently results in jaundice and ultimately hepatic failure. Hepatomegaly is the enlargement of the liver. Hepatorexis means rupture of the liver. Jaundice, also known as icterus, is a yellow discoloration of the skin and other tissues caused by greater than normal amounts of bilirubin in the blood. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver that is usually caused by a virus but may also be caused by toxic substances. Cholecystalgia is pain in the gallbladder. Cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder. A gallstone, also known as a biliary calculus, is a hard deposit that forms in the gallbladder and bile ducts. 
the formation of stones we'll discuss in the next chapter. Cholelithiasis is the presence of gallstones in the gallbladder or bile ducts. Abdominal CT, or CT scan, is a radiographic procedure that produces a detailed cross-section of the tissue structure within the abdomen, showing, for example, the presence of a tumor or obstruction. CT stands for computed tomography. An abdominal ultrasound is a non-invasive test used to visualize internal organs by using very high-frequency sound waves. Anoscopy is the visual examination of the anal canal and lower rectum using a short speculum called an anoscope. A speculum is an instrument used to enlarge the opening of any body cavity to facilitate inspection of the interior. An upper GI series, or barium swallow, and lower GI series, or barium enema, abbreviated BE, are radiographic studies to examine the digestive system. Barium is used as a contrast medium to make these structures visible. The term enema also describes a solution placed into the rectum and colon to empty the lower intestine through bowel activity. One purpose of an enema is to clear the bowels in preparation for an endoscopic examination. Hemocult, also known as a fecal occult blood test or abbreviated FOBT, is a laboratory test for hidden blood in the stools. A test kit may be used at home and the specimens are delivered to a laboratory or physician's office for evaluation. Stool samples are specimens of feces that are examined for content and characteristics. For example, fatty stools might indicate the presence of pancreatic problems. Cultures of the stool sample can be examined in the laboratory for the presence of bacteria or ONP, which are ova, parasite eggs, and parasites. An endoscope is an instrument used for visual examination of internal structures. Endoscopes are also used for obtaining biopsy samples, controlling bleeding, removing foreign objects, as well as for other surgical and treatment procedures. Colonoscopy is the direct visual examination of the inner surface of the colon, from the rectum to the cecum. Gastrointestinal endoscopy is the endoscopic examination of the interior of the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. Proctoscopy is the endoscopic examination of the rectum and anus. Sigmoidoscopy is the use of an endoscope for the direct visual examination of the interior of the entire rectum, sigmoid colon, and possibly a portion of the descending colon. Now let's cover the different treatment procedures that we have available for the digestive system. In this section, we'll look at different medications that we can use, as well as different procedures for the oral cavity and esophagus, stomach, intestines, rectum and anus, liver, and gallbladder. Medications include acid blockers, which are taken before eating, block the effects of histamine that signals the stomach to produce acid. An antiemetic prevents or relieves nausea and vomiting. An emetic produces vomiting. Laxatives are medications or foods given to stimulate bowel movements. Oral rehydration therapy, abbreviated ORT, ORT, is a treatment in which a solution of electrolytes is administered orally to counteract the dehydration that may accompany severe diarrhea. Esophagoplasty is a surgical repair of the esophagus. An extraction, as the term is used in dentistry, is a surgical removal of a tooth. A gingivectomy is the surgical removal of diseased gingival tissue. Maxiofacial surgery is specialized surgery of the face and jaws to correct deformities, treat diseases, and repair injuries. Palatoplasty is surgical repair of a cleft palate. A gastrectomy is a surgical removal of all or part of the stomach. A gastrotomy is a surgical incision into the stomach. And nasogastric intubation is the placement of a tube through the nose and into the stomach. Anoplasty is the surgical repair of the anus. A colectomy is the surgical removal of all or part of the colon. A colotomy is a surgical incision into the colon. A diverticulectomy is the surgical removal of a diverticulum. A gastroduodenostomy is the removal of the pylorus of the stomach and the establishment of an anastomosis between the upper portion of the stomach and the duodenum. An anastomosis is a surgical connection between two hollow or tubular structures. 
A hemorrhoidectomy is a surgical removal of hemorrhoids. A ileectomy is a surgical removal of the ileum. An ostomy is a surgical procedure to create an artificial opening between an organ and the body's surface. This opening is called a stoma. Ostomy can be used alone as a noun to describe a procedure or as a suffix with the word part that describes the organ involved. For example, a gastrostomy is the surgical creation of an artificial opening into the stomach. This procedure is frequently performed for the placement of a permanent feeding tube. An ileostomy is the surgical creation of an opening between the ileum and the end of the small intestine and the abdominal wall. A colostomy is a surgical creation of an opening between the colon and the body surface. The entire segment of the intestine below the ostomy is usually removed and an effluent flows from the stoma. A colostomy may be temporary to divert feces from an area that needs to heal. Colostomies are named for the part of the colon where the stoma or exit point is located. A proctectomy is the surgical removal of the rectum. Proctopexy is the surgical fixation of the rectum to an adjacent tissue or organ. Proctoplasty is the surgical repair of the rectum. A hepatectomy is the surgical removal of all or part of the liver. A hepatotomy is the surgical incision into the liver. Hepatoraphy means to suture the liver. And a liver transplant is an option for a patient whose liver has failed for a reason other than liver cancer. Because liver tissue regenerates, a partial transplant in which only part of the liver is donated may be adequate. A cholidocolithotomy is an incision into the common bile duct for the removal of gallstones. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy, also known as a lap coli, is a surgical removal of the gallbladder using a laparoscope and other instruments while working through very small openings in the abdominal wall. But don't stop there. Be sure you also check out the career opportunities, including dental hygienist, dental assistant, dental laboratory technician, registered dietitian, dietetic technician, dietetic assistant or food service worker, and sanitarian. I hope you also have time to check out the health occupation profile of certified dental assistant. Well, that's going to wrap it for this chapter, so if you have questions, be sure that you bring those to class next time we meet. But until then, I've got my mind on my tummy and my tummy on my mind, so let's get out of here and go get some grub. You guys have a wonderful day, be good people, do good things, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.